Howdy partners, Ed Bud here, and today I have a long run shoe review for you of the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel 2. So took the Rebel up to the half marathon distance today for my longer run of the week. 13.1 miles, just over 21 kilometers in the lovely warm English sunshine. It was beautiful out there. Shaded spectacles and the halo headband were both utilized today. I think the temperature is around about 11 degrees C when I was out there, so it was nice and pleasant. Certainly a vest day. Good to be able to get the vest out and the short shorts as well. First time this year. It's been a while. It's been a while. They're in the box of running clothes saying, please, it's time. And I thought, yeah, okay. Come on guys, let's do this. So average pace today in the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel of about seven minutes 30 per mile. I did take my foot off the accelerator the last three or four miles. I didn't go out with any water or anything at all. So I was starting to feel a little bit dehydrated by that point. That reminds me, need to buy some more gels. I think I certainly benefited today on the long run though from getting some additional sleep. Even the Garmin buzzed and said, Hey, excellent sleep last night, I thought. Running, it's going well, improving, but sleep, I'm even doing better in that. Certainly feeling a little bit more nimble than I thought I was going to be, but that did mean I went out a bit hot. Certainly considering it's another 50 plus mile week as well, so I'm happy with that. Just in case you didn't realise, you can also follow me over on Strava. There's a link in the description, along with also the Edbud Runners United Strava group. Please come and join us. A reasonable bit of elevation on this route, very similar in fact to the routes I've taken in the last few long run shoe tests. So it kind of presents a reasonable yardstick against some of the other shoes that I've tested of recent time. So how did the Rebel 2 fare on today's run? In fairness, very well is the answer. Roll the tiles. I had intended to take it slower, but if any of you have got this shoe already, you will know that it's a rather exciting shoe. It's quite exhilarating. The fun and enjoyment of the shoe really does shine through. It's quite a forgiving midsole there. Couple that with the exciting sounds of the Fratellis on the way round. I cranked up the earphones to the maximum level and that unwittingly made me speed up quite a bit. I didn't realise until I looked at the split times later. So the long run just disappeared today. I was really enjoying myself out there. Focusing on the upper first. It was very much a set and forget situation today with the upper on the Rebel 2. I laced them up, complete with the very thin Nike socks, which are a necessity with this shoe. And I just forgot about the upper. I didn't think about it once during the whole run. Nothing changed, it didn't flex, it didn't open up a little bit more. I think I'm about 30 miles in the shoe already and yeah, it just feels like it did when I took it out of the box. Nothing really bothered me about the upper whatsoever. Very similar in fact to the next percent two that I utilized on the previous day's interval sessions. I was doing the 10 by 400 repeats with a couple of minutes of recovery in between each one in the next percent and the upper's just, that's fantastic. It's a big improvement really do love it and it just looks better and better the more you beat this one up it kind of looks a bit pre-worn almost does that make sense I'm not sure about pre-worn guitars when they uh, do that relicking process to them maybe that will become a thing with running shoes you know people can drag them along behind a car or something or sort of whack them with a hammer maybe gouge some bits of foam out there you go relicked running shoes I think I might be onto something there. If relic running shoes interest you, let me know in the comments below. Fitting, yet yeah, forgiving. There's certainly a more race or pacey type feel about the upper here. Don't expect Saucony Triumph style plushness. It's not that sort of shoe. But certainly the feet weren't crying for mercy at the end of the run, so yeah. Very uh, promising, very promising. Midsole, midsole, midsole now. That midsole. It's certainly compressive. It's more compressive than a Teletronics LA-2A. And round about mile 10 today, I did find myself thinking, I wonder if, you know, how it would feel if there was some sort of plate in there, maybe like a nylon plate or something like that. Just to give it a little bit less squish. Not that it was bothering me, but if you want that feel with this foam, then obviously you've got to pay the bigger bucks. So yeah, you might feel that there should be a stabilizing element a little later in the run, but yeah, it was fine. I don't think the foam was bottoming out, anything like that. I just found that when I was running a little slower towards the end of today's longer run, perhaps I was falling back into the heel a little bit more. That's when I felt, oh, hang on. 
you know, it doesn't feel quite as stable as I remember it. But that's probably because my old legs were getting a bit fatigued. I do think you need some reasonably good form though to run in this shoe. I do recall some people wearing the TC and feeling that, yeah, they were falling into the foam a little bit. You do need to focus on your form with the Rebel 2. I think as the miles rack up, then it may prove to be a little bit too squashy and compressive for people and certain people might start to feel it in their knees. That's all I'll say. I do strongly believe that the likes of Nike and New Balance have implemented the plates in the midsoles of their shoes to provide a little stability there. I understand people feel they are to provide little pop on toe off. I do think that these foams are so compressive that without those plates sometimes, they just feel as if you're falling into the foam. It's kind of what I felt on the Invincible run, actually. So hence, that's the main difference, really, between the Rebel 2 and the RC Elite and the TC from New Balance. I mean, this one's much closer to the upper that you find on the RC Elite rather than the TC. That's quite thick. Certainly in terms of the tightness of the upper, though, it's closer to the RC. I did open up the throttle a few times here, mainly due to... Fratellis really, that's why they made me do it. I had to get around a few walkers and a few passers-by. There were some random mongrels at one point as well who were trying to nip my toes. It's quite a pacey dude actually, that dog. He, he tried keeping up with me. <laughs> he was out of puff though after a while. Did feel nice when you pick up the pace actually. I think that's one of the things I love about the shoe is that range and versatility. I think I've now probably tested the shoe from everything from recovery pace right up to my 5K pace and it feels good and works just about through the whole range. So, yeah, there's not many shoes I can say that for. Not many at all. Outsole wise, I am a little worried, I have to say. There's quite a bit of wear already in the midfoot area here and up towards that area where you sort of toe off. Nothing in the heel at all, but yeah, I am a little worried about that. In fact, there is quite a lot of wear just in that area there where I'm landing. Only 30 miles in, I'm seeing that. So yeah, it does concern me a little bit. You know, some shoes that I've tried out show almost nowhere at this point. In fact, just think about the next percent, I think they're around about 30 odd miles now and there's, there's nowhere whatsoever. So how much more wear will be displayed as time goes on? Well, we'll just have to see. Zero degradation in the heel. The midsole foam that's exposed looks fine, so I'll keep you posted. Grip is as good as I found on my initial review. I did aim for some grassy areas and some dirt areas today to try and help absorb some of the impact on the legs. And it fared really well on there, actually. It was quite enjoyable, in fact, running on the dirt. Although I had to be a little bit careful. There's quite a lot of loose twigs and branches and bits and bobs around there. So, yeah, that's not the upper to provide any protection from those. So all the feelings today on the long run back up the stuff I had in my initial review a couple of weeks back. It further solidifies my thoughts about the versatility of the Rebel 2. But obviously that wear on the outsole is a bit of a concern, certainly at this point. Midsole's feeling really good. It's opening up a little bit. Certainly an option for more pacey, longer range efforts. I think there's a lot of people waiting to pick this one up when it does release in certain other areas of the world. Quite lucky over here in the UK to get it a little early. It doesn't happen all that often. Impressive performance though at the price point. What are your thoughts on the Rebel 2 so far? I've seen lots of viewers testing the shoe out over on Strava. That does remind me in fact, please head over and join us at the Edbud Runners United Strava group will be very keen to have you. Let me see your thoughts and opinions on the Rebel 2 down in the comments. Musical interlude time. So on the long run today, I just played Fratelli's all the way. Some of the old stuff, some of the new stuff. There's one album in particular I hadn't listened to for some time, which is back from 2008, I believe. It's their one called Here We Stand. Look Out Sunshine and Mistress Mabel were the two winners on this album. Really lively guitars. Certainly sound like a Telecaster on there to me. And a really catchy hook in the chorus. It's just full of energy. It's exactly the sort of thing you need when you want to propel yourself forward. I love the Fratelli sound. Always sounds crisp and punchy and exciting. How many bands can you say that sound like that right now? Not many, not many. They're masters of doing that type of tune though. Although one of the later albums has a great track on there, which is quite a poignant one called Rock and Roll Will Break Your Heart. That's always going to be a quite sentimental tune. In fact, a guy actually said that to me once, Rock and Roll Will Break Your Heart. I remember I was at a gig. I think maybe he'd been in a band or something and something really bad had happened, like they'd split up and, I don't know, ruined his life or something, I don't know. But he actually said to me, Rock and Roll Break Your Heart. Yeah, I remember that. Anyway, if you want to run some fast miles, go and listen to the Fratellis. Thanks for spending some time with me here on the channel, guys. I do appreciate it. 
If you have commented recently and I haven't managed to get around to replying, I am sorry, there's so many these days, I do try to reply to everybody. Um, so yeah, it's nothing personal. If you haven't done so already, please help the channel out and hit that subscribe button and also click the bell below for notifications of when we launch those new videos. It helps the channel out a great deal in terms of the YouTube algorithm as well. If you give this video a thumbs up like and also share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud and I'll be seeing you.